And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. It's time, buddy! It's time! It's time! Yes, Bunny, my friend, it is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film podcast to boot scoot boogie our way into the second half of the big shoe. And it is said second half, wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our all new high octane 12 horsepower anti lock brakes, pro lock brakes, as well as anti lock brakes, because everything has to be both sides now. Yeah. That, that that's one thing that pisses me off about uh, the media is that the right always says, oh, the media is, is such a liberal bias. When in fact, what the media is doing is, OK, let's get both sides of this argument. Your side of the argument is. I don't want to die. OK, what's your side of the argument? Those people should die. These are two valid points. And we must hear them both out. That pisses me off. You know, not everything has to be both sides, but we do have anti lock brakes and pro lock brakes. What was I doing? Yes. The intro. Movie of the week. And this week, two holiday movies go head to head. It is Mark Polonia versus Jim Carrey as we discuss the 2000 live action film, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Bunny, did you remember our stipulation for this week's movie? Stipulation? Yes, there was. There was a stipulation. We were watching The Grinch for a specific reason. Ha! I knew you would forget, and I purposefully didn't remind you. But we're watching this movie for a specific reason, and the reason is, here on this side, Oh, you've got you've got uh, Mark Polonia's film, uh, Hell on the Shelf from 2021. Yes, that looks yeah. like it was made in two days with a budget of ten dollars. And then over over here, you've got the hundred and twenty five hundred and fifty million dollar massive big budget monstrosity, Jim Carrey's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Um. The question was, which is worse? Uh, an hour and a half of three adults talking to Static, or Jim Carrey giving you a, ma a migraine via the magic of cinema? Yeah. So, so see, let's 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 really like boil it down. Let, not which is worse, but more specifically, Bunny. If you had to watch one of these movies again, if you had to watch one of these movies, okay, if you, out of the two last movies that we did, the 2001 Hell on a Shelf film, film Hell, on, Hell a on a Shelf, or the big budget, Hell massive hit, okay, Hell why? On a shelf. <laughs> why? 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 I, I'm interested in this. Why would you? Because I didn't hate that movie nearly as much as you did to begin with, and I can see myself re-watching that movie at some point. Okay. I found okay. some things to be interested in with that movie, whereas this was... Please make it stop. Yeah, I think it's a good comparison, these two movies, because in one movie, nothing's happening literally just three guys talking to static for a good portion of the film. Yeah. And then on the other hand, you've got this movie where way too much is happening. <coughs> like the yin and yang of holiday hideousness. You know? This is a shoogie ball that I have here. I, I can also compare this movie to Rob Zombie's Halloween. Ah, uh, okay, because like here's a bunch like, of backstory we didn't need. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't yes. need to know it, and I think it kind of ruined the movie. I don't think I need to know that the Grinch is the Grinch because he the who's bullied him. 
Yeah, he, the interesting thing is, <coughs> is that we've got Jim Carrey's live action The Grinch, and so then we've got sucked in this movie. And then we've got. Uh, have you seen the animated movie The Grinch, Bunny? Mm, the original, not this new one. Oh, okay. You haven't seen the new one. Okay, the new one is a lot less bad than this. I don't want to say it's a good movie, but it's a lot less bad than this. But I find it interesting because both films go a different way. So the live action Grinch specifically shows that like, okay, here's why the Grinch hates Christmas. The Who's are fucking assholes. All of the Who's are fucking pieces of shit. They all suck. And well, they were well, bullying first off, him. First off, we have a society that has obviously, and I'm not sure how exactly, but obviously has been practicing bestiality with rodents for many, many a generation. Yeah, yeah. He so that exactly... we, have, we have humans and human rodent hybrids living together, you know. And the... I, I mean, I don't mean to be judgmental here, but if one of you eventually has a green fuzzy baby who's not as cute as the rest of them, go fucking figure, okay? Peter Pettigrew. Yeah. All of the Who's in Whoville look like uh, in that one Harry Potter where they finally turn the rat back into a human. Yeah. But then it's like, oh, it's, it's, I, I hated when Hin Cindy Lou Who showed up because it it was basically like that one Twilight Zone where here's the one beautiful person, but she's hideous because then the doctors turn around. Yeah. And you see that everyone's ugly. Yeah. So it's like, why is there one normal human, one green human, and a bunch of hideous fucking rat monsters? Well, but there are other normal humans in there as well. Yeah, they weren't it's nice all to rat see, creatures. It was nice to see black, but you know, shit like ooze. that skips a generation. You know, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, yeah, I would. I hated last week's movie, Hell on a Shelf. Yeah, I hated it. I hated, 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 hated that movie. I will watch that again instead of when I first sat down. To watch Jim Carrey's How the Grinch Stole Christmas for this podcast, I got 25 minutes in. I shut it off. I'm like, nope, nope, can't do this. Nope. It took a <laughs> while for me to finally sit down and watch it. Yeah. Because it's just, it's it's just it's a headache of a film. And I and I it think is... it took away. I think it took away a, a lot of what was right about the original cartoon. The the Grinch was a monster. You were afraid of him. Yeah. Which made the his conversion that more much more touching. Yeah, even when he converts and his heart grows three sizes and he goes to the Who's and he treats him nice, he's still treating him like shit. Yeah. He's just pretending to be nice now. So, okay, let's talk about some facts. How the Grinch Stole Christmas. It came out in the distant future. The year yes. 2000. The original working title was actually Blue Harvest, and originally, the Grinch was named Luke Starkiller. Yes. Bunny, what were your thoughts on the twist ending where you find out that Rosebud was a sled? Uh... Well, I, I knew it was a sled from the beginning. They weren't fooling me. You know, I mean, yeah. anybody could see it coming from a mile away. Yeah. Now, I've got a lot to talk about when it comes to this film. But first, uh, Bonnie, get your piece of paper out. I know you've got it. Uh, we have a sponsor for this week's movie. Okay. And yeah. uh, Bonnie and I both got sent copy 
for the the ad read for the commercial. Odd too, because we both got two completely different uh, ads of dialogue. But I figured we'd uh, get through this. I want to apologize because we usually don't do ads on this show because we're uh, first things first. We're the realist. Right. But uh, they paid us a lot of money. But I want to apologize, not just because we sold out, because that's the American dream. But what they gave us to read for ads, some of it seems like it might be crossing the line. I'm actually quite surprised that they want us to read this as an ad but hey they're paying they're paying the paycheck so uh here we go i will go first and then you can go bunny this week's movie how the grinch stole christmas is brought to you by the good folks at raid shadow legends download today or you're a fucking little bitch <laughs> Download Raid Shadow Legends today or we'll find where your mom lives and beat the crap out of her. Unless your mom is dead, then we will pee on her grave. Again, this is what they sent us. We don't want to say any of these things. Raid Shadow Legends is paying us to say this. Download Raid Shadow Legends today. What are you going to do? Not download it and be a punk ass bitch? I don't think so, fucker. Download today. Now, Bunny, do you want to read your ad? Sure. Okay. Uh. What does it say on your Sponsored by Pepsi. Hmm. Oh, oh, yeah, That's I a, get it. I don't like on it. Yeah, no, yeah. It, it, it's weird because the sponsor for this week's movie has a sponsor. So this week's movie is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends, which is brought to you by Pepsi. Oh, are these, so, are these commercials all for Raid Shadow Legends? Yeah, yeah. Raid Shadow Legends brought to you by Pepsi. It's weird. Uh... We might yeah, have it's, to read it's very, some more. It's, it's very meta. Yeah, it's very meta. Uh, okay, so first off, so first off, if I could only get paid for saying the word "so" during this podcast, I'd be rich AF. Secondly, I have a treat. Oh, look, a wild chap appears. Funny, funny. Yes. Let me tell you the story of why every Dr. Seuss movie, The Cat in the Hat, The Grinch, The Lorax, etc., is a piece of shit. Okay. So excited for this. A mini shap within the podcast. A mini half. Historic approximations. We're losing the steep. Dr. Seuss! I actually knew him way back when he was just med student Seuss. Badumtis. I wrote the Badumtis here. He was married at age 25 to a woman named Helen Palmer, who was a kid's book author in her own right. They had a real nice life, but she was very sick. She, she fought a lot of sickness, a lot of illness, a lot of disease, and she died in 1967. She effing killed herself. Wow. Yeah, she was in so much pain. She took her own life. And then Dr. Seuss, the freaking dog, dirty dog, remarries less than eight months later. Months. In okay. about, about seven months after uh, his wife killed herself, She's married to someone else. The second wife is named Audrey Diamond, and this, this bitch, this bitch, girl. Okay, so Dr. Seuss refuses to sell the movie rights to his books. Oh, no, 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 no toys, no TV shows, no movies, no. I'm done with Hollywood. But his second wife is all like, come on, Ted, we need the money. And Dr. Sue says, no, I'm standing to my principles. I am not selling the rights at all. Uh, yes, 
as long as I'm alive, there will be no selling off of my book rights. And his wife said, oh, okay, yeah, sure, anything you say, honey. As long as you're alive, you said? Interesting, huh. I'm going to just uh, put Universal Studios on speed dial for no reason. How you feeling, Ted? Feeling good? Got a bit of a cough? And so the second Dr. Seuss, her husband, died, she basically ran to Hollywood with dollar signs in her eyes. And so from that point on, that's why you've seen Dr. Seuss hats and clothes and toys and dolls and theme park rides and catheters. That's why you've seen so much of that. Because of Audrey Diamond Seuss Geisel and uh, and a series of big budget monstrosity movies like this one, Jim Carrey's The Grinch. If Dr. Seuss weren't already dead, seeing this movie would have effing killed him. <laughs> Period. So in 1977, one movie studio over here buys the rights to the cat in the hat. And while they're working on that, a year later in 1998, Universal gets the rights to the Grinch. But production halts on the cat in the hat because they go, oh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Back up, back up, back up. Let's see how these guys do. So they, the cat in the hat halts production until they see how successful the Grinch is. and oh my. God, Bunny, Dr. Seuss's second wife's demands were written. She, she, first off, she demanded $1 million for the rights to the Grinch. Okay. Already, that's a lot. She also demanded 4% of the total worldwide box office gross. And this movie made about $350 million. So that's a big paycheck. And then you add the $5 million from the rights. Already, this is a huge paycheck. But she's not done. She already, she could buy a lot of Snapple. But we're not done. She also demanded 50% of the merchandising rights. Okay. That is crazy. And 50% of the music sales, and a whopping 70% of all book sales. What the hell? And I told this to my wife, and I said, Natasha, what the hell? And she said, Well, if you're intent on going against your dead spouse's wishes, at least get that dollar dollar bill. Yeah. So. Uh, but because of this story, this mini shaft, I have refused to watch both The Cat in the Hat and Jim Carrey's Grinch in its entirety until now. And I think I'm going to have to become a Scientologist after this because I need to get these engrams out of my head. Yes. But that Understandable. is Understandable. That is the true story of Dr. Seuss and his two wives. The first wife, uh, what was her name, Helen? She was like, oh, you don't want to sell the rights to these? That's absolutely fine. I understand. And then he did sell the rights. He sold the rights for uh, animated specials. And they made one absolute classic of an animated special and about 12 shitty ones. When you think Dr. Yeah. Seuss on TV, there's a reason why you remember Boris Karloff and not Bobby Sherman as the cat in the hat. <laughs> yeah, that's who was the cat in the hat. It was the Hello Mudda Hello Fada guy. Was the, hey, it's the cat in the hat. Hey, come, come on over and kill me. So, uh, I hate this movie. A lot. 
I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I'm pretty sure that Amber is gone, so I can continue saying this unabated because my oldest Amber, huge fan. All day she's been wearing <laughs> Grinch pajamas. Uh, she she got her dog to just constantly play with this Grinch squeaky toy. She 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 loves the Grinch and all of the Grinch. You know what? She hardly has ever seen the animated original 1960s Grinch, and that pisses me off. Never seen that? She has seen it a few times growing up. But you mean to tell me you're obsessed with the Grinch, but Jim Carrey's the Grinch? And and you have never... You've barely seen Boris Karloff, <laughs> one of his greatest roles? Yeah, it upsets me. It upsets me. I can, I can understand. I can understand. But like, you're keeping cool. You know, you, you, you haven't disowned her. You know, I. It upsets me. Yeah, it upsets me. This movie. You haven't spoken to the lawyers and had her written out of the will yet. Well, my lawyer yet. is ghosting me. My my lawyer is just totally ghosting me, so yeah. that's 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 probably why. Uh, uh, what is wrong with this movie, buddy? Uh, pretty much everything. Pretty much everything. Pretty much okay, everything. I... whose society is really fucked up and mean? Yes, I mean. Uh, they 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 brutalized and bullied the Grinch so bad that it was preferable for him to go live in a fucking cave all by himself. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Much. And like they had no problem with this. They only had a problem with him coming back. Yes. Yes. So, there's some real problems with the Who's here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, that's what I was saying. Okay, so in the live-action Grinch, uh, a little bit high, in, in the live-action Grinch, they specifically show, okay, the Grinch hates Christmas because he's bullied, and the Who's are douchebags, and so, okay, the Grinch is kind of in the right. In the animated version, uh, which is not bad, it's also not good, but it's fine. But yeah. in the animated Grinch, there's there are like flashbacks that show him celebrating Christmas by himself in an orphanage because he his parents left him. And he sees all of these other families through the window of the orphanage celebrating Christmas together, and he's alone, an orphan. And it's like, okay, uh, hey, unpopular opinion, uh, hot take. You don't have to like fucking Christmas. Yeah. It's not a law. A grumpy guy in a cave hates a holiday. Great, leave him the hell alone. These who's suck ass. <laughs> they fucking suck. They deserve to have Christmas taken away. I'm just going to come out and say it. Fuck the who's. Uh -huh. Fuck the who's. I think it's fascinating that you get um, the live action How the Grinch Stole Christmas about the who's down in Whoville who like Christmas a lot and their uh, mayor uh was recently canceled because of the me too movement and he's like a horrible corrupt politician so much of that is also in the animated dr seuss book uh horton hears a who yes because in that animated film which also featured jim carrey as horton uh the Who's are also pretty effing horrible. And there's also a corrupt politician in charge of the town. Yeah. And also the Lorax. The Lorax is horrible because...
the Lorax animated movie is horrible because uh, 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 you had the Lorax selling cars. I mean, that's just fucked up. Yeah, yeah. There were commercials with the Lorax selling cars. That's fucked up. Any way you look at it, you just killed Dr. Seuss. Yeah. But uh, also a corrupt politicians in that in that film. A lot of corruption in the world of Dr. Seuss. The TV shows I have a less problem with because uh, the the PBS show, The Cat in the Hat, knows a lot about that. That's actually all right. Uh, the Cat in the Hat is voiced by Martin Short. Okay. And you never see the parents, just like in the original Cat in the Hat. And uh, um, my high schooler, Mal, he was obsessed with Green Eggs and Ham on Netflix for a while. Really? Yeah, apparently that is delightful. So, um, as far as I can tell, it's like a kid's Dr. Seuss-themed planes, trains, and automobiles. But it's supposed to be great. But I, here's my problem with the film. Okay, so this is a big-budget cash grab about how Christmas is a cash grab. Way to miss the point of the story. Yes. You know? It's like, hey, these people like Christmas. This guy doesn't. He steals Christmas. And now it's like, okay, let's make these people all horrible and they take Christmas too seriously. And it's like, no, that's that was never there. But I that upsets me. Hashtag the Grinch was right. Yes. Hashtag not my Grinch. Yes. Hashtag not my Grinch. My Grinch is Boris Karloff, period. Yes. Period. That's my Grinch. Word up, my Grinch. And you remember when Jim Carrey was always on crack? During that period in time where if you saw Jim Carrey, he was just on cocaine. Yeah. Ace Ventura, The Mask, Cable Guy, Liar Liar, Bruce Almighty, this. Yeah. Now have now if you see him, it's like, okay, what cause are we talking about now? That's why I liked Sonic the Hedgehog. He went back to being Jim Carrey for a little bit in the Sonic the Hedgehog movies. It was surprising. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was surprising. Uh, I, I, I've never liked Jim Carrey. I'm just not you know, he's done a couple of things that have been good, but they're not good because Jim Carrey's in it. Yeah. You know, like, The Truman Show is an awesome fucking movie. Love that movie. Love that movie. And we could totally recast Jim Carrey, and it would still be an awesome movie. Yeah. Yeah. You know who would be great in the Truman Show? Uh, Charles Tr Nelson Riley. Truman Capote. Truman Capote. Nice. Also, another unpopular opinion. This, this is the unpopular opinion episode. Never been a fan of Molly Shannon's. SNL's Molly Shannon from uh. the... From the sh movie Superstar. Never been a yeah, fan. Yeah, okay. And so I thought, like, is there any movie that I've ever seen where it's like, hey, Molly Shannon's in this. And the only, hey, I'm excited to see Molly Shannon in this film. Damn it, the, o the only one I can say with a certainty, Wet Hot American Summer. Beyond that, don't care. Yeah. Not care at all. Never been the biggest fan. This is a Ron Howard movie, though. You can barely recognize Clint Howard. Yes, I thought I saw Clint Howard, though. He was the mayor's assistant. That And I had to do a double take because it's like, really? What? It says a lot about someone's looks that they made... Clint Howard looked like a rat face monster and he looked better. Yes. Like, oh wow, that 
vaguely handsome who is Clint Howard? Shit. Did y'all win a best makeup Oscar? Because you should have. Yeah. Uh, I like the fact that uh, basically um, the Grinch lives in the Batcave after Jim Carrey's The Riddler destroyed it. Yes. So that's nice. Most of the set was literally built on Universal Studios' back lot right behind the Psycho House. Yay. I find that fascinating. I find that fascinating. Bunny, Tim Burton was originally offered to do this film, and he considered it but turned it down to do Sleepy Hollow instead. What would Tim Burton's Grinch have looked like? Well, overall, it would have been darker. Uh, I'm I'm thinking the Grinch may have had stripes, okay, possibly, or wear stripes ox. I feel like he'd wear something with tails, like yeah. a, like a tuxedo yeah. jacket or something. Yeah. Uh I think Johnny Depp's going to be amazing as the Grinch, and of course, Johnny Depp would play the Grinch. Yes. I was trying to think what was the name of the guy from who was the lead singer and, of Boingo Boingo that now does all of the music scores. Danny Elfman. Yeah, you know what? Let's go to Batman on this one. Let's see if we can get Prince to do all the music for Tim Burton's yeah. How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Helena Bottom Carter would be Cindy Lou. Who? Yeah. 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 Uh... That's all I've got. I hate this movie. I fucking hate this movie. <laughs> Fuck the Grinch. Fuck Jim Carrey's The Grinch. All of the Dr. Seuss movies. Even even uh, the Lorax has some bops in it. The song How Bad Can I Be fucking slaps. That's a banger. That's a certified yeah. classic. But uh, just the fact and just the fact that Danny DeVito has become such a living meme. That I can say, hey, you know the Lorax in this, kids? That's Danny DeVito, and they have 100%. They absolutely know who that is. Yeah. But that's how much Danny DeVito has become sort of like a legend, like a like a, like a anthropomorphic meme. Yeah. But I, I hate this movie. I would much rather watch Hell on a Shelf. That says a lot. Good for you, Mark Polonia. <laughs> but it, I will happily never watch this movie again. <clears throat> so what do we have in store? Okay, so I asked uh, with much anxiety. <laughs> uh, well, this is going to be our last Christmas episode. So okay. I thought we'd do something a little bit different. This might come as a shock to you, Bunny, but I thought for our next episode, which will be next Sunday, December 18th, 2022, I thought, how about we do Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny? What? Okay. Which Santa version? Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny. Uh, we Our annual viewing. Of yes. Santa and the Ice Cream yeah. Bunny. However, we did not do it last year for reasons. Yes, we did. I don't believe we did. I, I totally know we did. We did? Yeah. Okay, because yeah. I know that that was roundabout a time that I disappeared. Because but... I remember thinking quite often, good lord. Oh yeah, Don't there you go. Don't let this be yeah, our last was... episode. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there you go. Yeah, episode four twenty nine. We, the Matrix Resurrections. I saw that twice. I couldn't tell you a single thing of what happened in that whole goddamn movie. Uh, yeah, there you go. We were still doing Bunny versus. Uh, we talked about Mr. Lobo. Uh, this year. I'm going to watch Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny no less than 30 times, and I'm going to write all new notes of the film. Okay? Hey. Because, uh, yes, okay, in previous years, I have just said the exact same thing about Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny. Uh, but this year, 
I'm definitely not doing that. And this isn't just a bizarre meta thing. No. All new notes. Uh, never before said or heard before this point. So you don't have to go listen to episode 105 or episode 154 or episode 198 or episode 241 or episode 285 or episode 421. Nine, just trust us. This, the seventh annual discussion of Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny is all new, never before heard. A deep dive into this amazing film with knowledge that no one has heard before. And which version are we going to do? We did Thumbelina. Should we do Jack and the Beanstalk? This is what I'm thinking. Uh, it's free on YouTube as a riff track. If we have to watch this movie again, let's at least make it fun. I'm kind of done with riff tracks. Yeah, that's what and I we haven't done. We haven't done a riff tracks in a really long time, but I just remember how painful this movie is. So I was thinking maybe doing the riff tracks one, but no, we have we've barely done the we've barely done the Jack and the Beanstalk one. Yeah. Plus, I believe it's shorter. Yeah. Okay. Let's do the uh, not the riff tracks one because I I I am done with riff tracks. So uh, Jack and the Beanstalk. That is what we are doing. Jack Bean S. Period. Boom! That is what we are doing next week. We are okay. finishing out the year, our last episode of the Pope on Film of the Year, as we are taking an all new look. All new look at Santa Claus, Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny, a film which features a film within a film and features an ice cream bunny, which is never explained. No. And it was filmed at a defunct theme park by a man who did a lot of nudie cuties. Yes. We will learn all about that next week in an all new episode of the podcast that no one has ever heard before. So I'm excited about that. But now that I'm looking back, but that's next week. Now that I'm looking back at this week, the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs, the ins and the outs, I have to say. Bonnie, I think. I, now I'm I'm just thinking. This has been a pretty good episode of the podcast. Yes. This has been a damn good episode oh, okay. of the podcast. Whew. Okay, because I was I was getting nervous there. I also felt that it was a good episode of the podcast, but I didn't want to. You're the person who makes that distinction, not me. And so I don't want to step on any toes. But yes, I concur with that assessment. Good, sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am May Lynn. And on behalf of Natasha and Gizmo and Eleanor and Maxwell and everybody else in the house. I just want to say thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening. And we will see you next week. You godless heathens. Less than a minute. Y'all are pushing. It. Okay. Hey, come on, come on, come on. And you mean one. Oh, okay. The Grinch. Got it.